That's it. At this time, praise the Lord. I know, this, I know you're waiting for the best. And, and that's the word of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we need to hear the word this morning. Are you ready to hear the word this morning? Praise the Lord. Prepare your hearts and your mind. Open your ears to the word of God. Receive our counsel and eternal, who is the pastor of Emmanuel Apostolic Church, 1929, Harris Street, North Charleston, South Carolina. Receive our count of eternal by saying amen. Amen. Christ to well, the King Lock, to all the saints of God. We just praise the Lord for being in His presence. Once again, we just we love the Lord with all of our hearts and our minds and our souls. And we desire to do the will of God. And in doing the will of God, it often calls for a lonely travel. And I've just learned to just smile and say, God, I thank you for not putting any more on me than I can bear. And we just thank God today. I was going to attempt to sing a song, but you know what? I have to preach another service, and I'm already a little bit hoarse. And what do y'all think I'm going to do? Sing. Put that put that take your time. Take your time, bro. Take your time. <laughs> take your time. Y'all ain't tell me what I'm gonna do. I think so. well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Amazing grace shall always be my song. Hiya, 
Shaka Shata. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You would turn with me in your Bibles to Psalms 139. This, I was given this scripture throughout the week. And then at 3 o'clock this morning, the Lord gave me the title of the message. And originally, you know, I, I told my wife, especially and even the congregation, that I've come to a place now in life where I don't walk around quick. I don't walk around with questions in my mind. I don't walk around with unanswered need to know things. I just ask God. Y'all ain't saying yes, nothing. Yes, I guess y'all okay yes, walking around confused yes. trying to figure out why. I don't know why God no, didn't know. Y'all no, can live no, like that if you want to. No. But I need to know because the word of God says he has made it clear by his spirit. Yes. The Lord gave me this, this title of this message. So I asked God, I said, Lord, what does this mean as it relates to the scripture? So when I got up after seven, he gave me the remaining scriptures to make sense of the message. So I'm going to give you all the, the title of the message, and it won't make any sense to you, but you're going to get it. Amen. The title of our message for this afternoon is As the World Turns, While You're Searching for Tomorrow. As the world turns, while you're searching for tomorrow. <coughs> In Psalms 139, the psalmist David, he's writing his request to God. And he simply says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knoweth my downsetting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but thou, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into the heavens, thou art there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, Amen. and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Amen. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness as the light are both a light to thee. Again, as the world turns while you're searching for tomorrow. It, David, as he was acknowledging the powers of an omnipresent God, uh, as he was acknowledging the David was simply reminding himself as he was writing to God that there is nothing I can do that you don't know about. That there is nowhere I can go that you can't find me. Now, there is no darkness that can hide my secrets. So David was literally just telling God, because you know who I am. Sure. 
Uh, see, y'all don't like this kind of preaching because it's too real. Uh, uh, the fact is, uh, we got a lot of people who are church members on Sunday. Uh, uh, but don't catch them Sunday evening through Saturday night. Uh, uh, you would be surprised how they live and what they do and where they go. Uh, that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil it reminds me that the Lord is keeping a record he's going to try my life according to the word David simply says God there's no need for me to put up a front with you there's no need for me to act this way when I'm in your presence and prayer there's when I'm around church folks Cause you know my thoughts You know my heart You know what time I go to bed You know what time I wake up David says even When I think I'm creeping In the dark He says the darkness is as light Y'all see y'all let, let me make more sense of this for you Psalms 139, 13 says, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. David says, you know when I sit back and I evaluate this whole thing of existence. God, you were in control before I even knew who I was. While I was in my mother's womb, David said, you protected me from death. And you marvelously and perfectly made me as I am. In other words, it's not a mystery who you are. It's not a mystery why you have the Characteristics and attributes that you do. Now, God marvelously formed you. Now, he saw that he needed a certain personality uh, for the season of life. Uh, but what you need to realize uh, is like the world. Now, we took on other attributes uh, and characteristics uh, and pretended that we were something else. Uh, Searching for 
tomorrow. So many of us, we're walking around in fear because we don't understand God's plans for our lives. The one thing that I can promise you that as I stand here this 10th month, this 10th day, and the year 2010, is I don't worry about tomorrow. Oh, praise God. Because God has a plan for my life. See, one of the things that I come to realize is that because God has fast fashioned my life for what it is that he's desired for this season, you or nobody else can stop that. See, I left it on there because the reality is you can't stop it, but I sure can. Y'all ain't going to say amen right there. God can have all purposes and plans for me. But if I step outside of his will, he can't do what he desires towards me. Y'all watch this. Watch this. David says, For thou possessed, has possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and carelessly wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance. Amen. Yet be it unperfect and in thy book all my members were written, which is which is which with his continents were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. See, y'all need to know that. God's thoughts to you are precious. The devil tells you that there's no hope and no purpose for your being. Telling you all the time that you all by yourself and, and you're ugly and you're this and you're that. But that's just the devil trying to fool you to believe the lie rather than accept the truth. And that even if by the world standards I'm ugly and unattractive, I'm still marvelously made by the... Y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. I, uh, I will wear ugly like nobody else wears those. Y'all don't want to be real. See, that's something Somebody gave my wife a picture of me when I was about 23 years old. And my wife, when I walked in, the picture was on the kitchen table. And I walked past the picture and had to come back and go, wow, that fella looked familiar. And I go, wow, that was me. What I'm trying to tell you is, wherever I was, I did what I did. I did it well. But all you could see was a smile. Oh, when I had problems with the way I said certain words, I learned how to use other words. So you would never know I had a problem saying those words. In other words, as the world turned, as I was searching for tomorrow, I wasn't worried about you and nobody else. I was perfecting Carlton. Because I knew there was going to be a season that God
But one day, somebody said to me, you know, you would look real good if you cut it all off. And I go, how can I cut my hair off? Because that's not me. But one day, I got in the mirror and just closed my eyes and started going at it. And then when I looked at myself, I go, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, that's a new you. Now, you. You got to do you like you do you. Now, there was no need to cry about what I no longer had. I had to embrace what I now had to walk up on the steps I'm trying to say. As the world turns, it sets for tomorrow. Now, I'm not going to wrestle with as things come and change. I'm says if I should have if I should count them how precious are thy thoughts unto me O God how great is the sum of them David says if I should count them they are more in number than the sand when I awake in other words David said the simple thing about my reality is God you got so many wonderful things in store for me in your own heart. There's no need for me to sit here and be complaining and upset about what I don't have, what I didn't get, and what I've lost. Because your thoughts concerning me are more than the sands of the sea. Y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. If you lost it, just say goodbye. If it walked out on you, just say search for tomorrow. Uh, then he said, if I try to number them, I couldn't even begin to enumerate because there are too many of them. He says, when I wait, I am still with thee. In other words, I may feel like I'm all by myself. I can sometimes look around and nobody understands me. But David says, the one thing I can rest assured is thou art always with me and you're better than any friend you're better than the father who may have walked out of my life you're better than the mother who may have denied me because you cannot deny yourself because you say I love you and how do I know you love me God for the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only son But have everlasting life. The fact that I'm saved. The fact that I'm sanctified. The fact that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Tells me that you love me. Somebody said, well, well, well. How you know? That's all right. Somebody said, how you know all that? It's a simple fact that, that any child that looks like their daddy knows that that's your father. And the fact that there's a heavenly language and the fact that when God filled us all with the Holy Ghost, he gave us all one language. Somebody said, well, I don't know what that language is. The Bible said, after that you receive the Holy Ghost, ye shall receive power that you will speak in other tongues. The heavenly language is you might have started out saying hallelujah. You might have started out saying Jesus. But when the spirit comes, when the governor comes into your life, rather than saying hallelujah, you may start out with none, 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 none. But when the joy of the Holy Ghost continues to flood your soul, your none, 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 none is going to flood. And it's going to go in the presence of God. And all of the angels are going to rejoice over that one soul that has come through.
am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked. O oh God, depart from me. Therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Oh, see, see, this is the hard part right here. Search me. Search me. See, we can't say that. David says, search me, oh God. David said, I'm so transparent in your presence, God. Search me. Some of us think if we never say it, or if we never act on it, then God don't know it's there. Don't be foolish. Even the devil knows it's there. That's why he keeps trying to tempt you. That's why he's putting them dreams in your mind. That's why he keeps trying to put those people that keep coming to you over and over again. Because he understands there's some weakness there. And one of these times you will give in to your weakness. So David said, look at me, God. He said, I'm so transparent in your presence. He said, search me. Search me. How many of us today, as the world turns, and as we're searching for tomorrow, can honestly say to God, search me. I don't mean the image that you want everybody to see and be happy with. I'm talking about how many of us want God to see your nakedness. And I'm not talking about your disrobing, but I'm talking about the true nature of your heart. I find out that one of the reasons why people have such a difficult time dealing with me, because I'm so honest. If I don't like something, I'll let you know. If I'm displeased with something, I'll let you know. Because there's no need for me to be false with you and cause you to believe something that's not true. Y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you? I wish that the saints could go back to being so transparent and true that when we all have problems, we don't have to put up a front. We don't have to come to church with our church face on. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I knew it was going to get quiet. That's why folks, when they got problems, they stay home. Because they can't measure up to anybody else. And what they don't realize is all the people who come in usually aren't really what they're projecting. They're just better actors than, than you are. Y'all can say amen right there, brother preacher. See, my thing is, I get it together when nobody's here. I come into the presence of God and talk to Him all by myself. I don't have, I don't need a crowd to boost me, cause I got a crowd that y'all can't see. Y'all yeah, trying to figure out what that, what is that crazy man talking about? Amen. Talk to him. My crowd is the angels. Y'all don't get it. I, I sometimes. When I'm so down in the dumps and I just need to hear something from the Lord. I would tell you that when I'm in prayer, the Lord allows me to hear the angels singing in my spirit. And it just gets me up out of myself and say, hold on, wait a second. Why am I acting crazy when I got all of this behind me pushing me forward? As the world turns, as you're searching for tomorrow. We got to start with us. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Now, how many of us really want people to know what our thoughts are? One of the things I'm so grateful to God, He delivered me from, was the ability 
to read people. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. I could touch you and know what you were thinking when I practiced witchcraft. It was one of the most miserable part of living because nothing was ever a secret. Y'all said, man, that'd be cool. You'd always know what people were thinking. No, you don't want to know that. That's why I tell people, get out of my head. Don't try to know what's going on in my mind. Get out of there because you won't handle what's there. Because you've got to understand that we think as long as my face says happy, happy is what I am. But I found that there's a whole lot of hurt behind this bunch of smiles. I find that there's a whole lot of pain behind laughter. Y'all don't have to say amen right there. Uh, but when I can be true with myself, <laughs> today I may have my head a little low. <laughs> searching for tomorrow and I'm almost finished believe it or not Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 verses 12 through 17 when you have it signified by saying amen The word of the Lord reads, and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Looking holy. Acting like you got it together. He said, and the violent take it by force. In other words, I got to get myself together so that when I see that I have lost something that God said is mine, I'm going to have to get violent. Y'all don't understand. Church folks don't get violent. What does the word say? And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Yes. And the violent, and the violent, do what? I'm going to go to devil, devil, <laughs> devil. You got what's mine. I want it back. No. All kinds of disease trying to rack your body. You're going to say sickness. Sickness. You better get out of my body. Leave me alone. Uh-uh, you're going to have to get violent with it. Hold on. Here's, oh, here's, you're trying to take my life. Oh, it's all now. I command you in the name of Jesus. Uh, come out of here. Yeah. In the morning, good morning, Jesus. In the afternoon, it's me again, oh 
prophets and the law prophesied unto John. In other words, they all foretold. They all saw a day coming. They didn't experience it. They didn't have it manifested. But the Bible says, if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to do what? Yeah. Let him do what? Yeah. See, I see, see, that's our problem. Because we're listening with our natural ear. God ain't talking to your head. He's not trying to talk to your intellect. I can't understand the Bible. It don't make no sense to me. God says exactly. I didn't want it to go to your head. My word is meant for your heart. My word is meant for the inner man. Because the things of God cannot be discerned or understood by the natural man. Because your nature is not of God. Your nature is of Adam. Mm -mm. Yes. See, that don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. What we call strength, God calls weakness. Amen. What we call rich, God calls poor. Y'all don't get what I'm trying to tell you. See, that's our problem. We look in at everything from a carnal perspective. But God says, when you know me, you know that that stuff that people are projecting, it isn't who I am. <coughs> because God says, I am meek and lowly. I want you to understand that I don't need the masses to do what I've got to do. So y'all don't get that. The Bible said that the apostles were a small group of men who came against the religious system of that day. And because they were filled with the Holy Ghost and had a zeal and a passion for God, the Bible said they turned the world upside down. That's why we sit in the church. Satan, leave me alone. We patty cake. We patty cake. And say, go, I ain't going nowhere. You don't have no authority. And then you go to Satan, well, say, I spoke in tongues, Satan said, Ann, what does your tongues mean? I'm a member of such and so church. And he goes, okay, what does that mean to me? He's not threatened by your titles, nor your experiences. But he is threatened by the authority and your exercising in the gifts of the kingdom. That's why Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. What is truth? Somebody said, well, Jesus is God. That ain't truth. That's what got a lot of us in bondage because we can't get past the fact that he's God and everything else in the Bible don't make any sense. The truth is the fact that I have designed and destined you to victory. The truth is that you in and of your natural self are defeated. As the prophets and all those were before he said, but the fact is, I died that you can be free. I died that I can put my spirit in you. That you would have my authority. And my authority would be in you to be spoken out. Amen. That's too much for y'all. See, that's too much for y'all. See, God says, see, 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 that's why he said, wherever you bound on earth would be bound in heaven. Whatever you, you bind it on, the, on in heaven shall be loose. Or whatever you loose on, on, the, on the earth shall be loose in heaven. Because he wanted you to understand that you got to say something in order for it to manifest in the kingdom. The devil got y'all shutting your mouth going talking about, if I say this, something bad going to happen. <laughs> oh, you little faith. I'm trying to finish. Watch this. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. In other words, he's saying, We are a body of people. We're supposed to be connected, and we're not even on the same page. When our brothers and our 
sisters call out to us, we don't even hear their call. When our brothers and sisters hurt, we don't even connect with it. Why? Because we don't know who we are, so we can't identify with who and what they are. You say, well, man, what's going on with that? Because you got a bunch of actors, people pretending to be something that they're not. But I promise you that as we are in this last day, that if you don't come to the place where you can be real first with God and then with yourself. Now, let me, let me put it this way. You got to be real first with yourself in order to be real with God. And if you can't be real with yourself, you won't be defeated in this culture. Why? Because everything around us is suspect. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have to say it. Everything is us. Everything around us is suspect. Y'all don't have to say it. Y'all y'all know I'm, you know how I know what you're saying? Because every one of us, every time we hear something about somebody, it's not hard for us to believe it. We go, hmm, I thought so. So everything around us is what? Suspect. But when you are transparent. First with yourself and God and everyone around you. When people see you, it's like, man, how can anybody be so honest? You know how? Because truth will make you free. I don't think y'all understand what I'm trying to say. You want to be free today? Be honest. You, you, that's the secret to success. Honesty. If I don't have to fake it, I don't have to try to keep up the show. You know why so many people are miserable today as the economy is busted? Because the lifestyle they've been trying to perpetrate the people, they can't keep up. Now everybody knows they ain't had what they said they had. Now they got to go back and make explanations of why they don't have what they had before. Suspect. But my thing, if you transparent, hey, guess what? You saw me struggling to keep it, and when it's gone, it's gone. Am I making sense, anybody? Yes. As the world turns, as you're searching for tomorrow, the key is truth. You got to walk in truth. If you're unhappy, guess what? You're just unhappy. If you're in pain, you're just in pain. You know what fix unhappiness? Truth. You know what fix pain? Truth. Y'all don't have to be real. Every problem you got, you know what the answer of it is? Somebody say it to me. Truth. And as the world turns and searches for tomorrow, what is the answer? Truth. I don't think somebody believed that. Let me give you the rest of this and then we'll go home. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 Verses 3 through 7 says this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And the problem is we don't understand truth. We try to live in a spiritual kingdom being natural beings. And then we try to be natural beings living in a spiritual kingdom. Truth is, you're going to have to either die to the one in order to live in the other. You can't be two, a part of both kingdoms, and be successful. Check your battles, check your struggles. You'll find that most of what you long for is because your flesh is still alive. You find that when you are and envious of other people, it's not because of them. Truth is, it's you. Oh, Y'all don't have to say that. Amen. When I become fearful, it's not the thing that I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of me. Because now I'm afraid of my response or my reaction. That don't make any sense to you, does it? Because truth tells me whatever it is, God is in control. Truth tells me that if I got to go through hell or go to heaven, thou art. Yeah, see, 
I'm taking y'all right back to the beginning. Truth tells me that God, you know my thoughts. So that if I'm afraid, I can come to you and say, God, help me. How dare I tell God I don't believe. He already know you don't believe. That's why he can't move in your situation. Until you're truthful with him, he can't move it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through yourselves. What does the word say? Mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds is simply the fact that you have given power over a place in your life or condition that you have been in the wrong or not in the place where God called you to. And because you allow the devil and the powers of darkness to have authority in that place, they're sitting on your blessing. They're sitting there talking about where you, where you think you're going. It ain't going to happen. You better go back there. You go back with your head down. While you sleeping, he waking you up. It ain't going to happen tomorrow either. Now you waking up tired and frustrated. What's wrong with you? As the world turns and search for tomorrow, you recognize that I got authority over you, Satan. I can speak this thing into existence if I connect with God's word. Amen. Amen. Watch this, watch this. Amen. You got to pull down the what? Strong. You ever had to pull down something? You don't pull it down like, come on down. You got to do it violently with some, come on here. That means the violent taketh by what? I'm trying to put it all together for you. You got to understand this. If I'm going to be successful in this walk with God, I got to be truthful. If I'm going to have what God says is mine, I'm going to have to go in with authority and take it. Oh, y'all getting it. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He said, casting down. What? Casting down fantasies. Casting down fantasies. See, that's what's going on with a lot of us. We in fantasy. We in la la land. We don't even see the reality of what's going on. Because we can create a world of happiness and all kinds of other things around us. And what we need to do to get it, it ain't coming because we're not even connected with the truth. Casting down imagination. Fantasy. Y'all see that? What did I tell you? When I recognized that the hair was gone, I didn't pretend it was still there. Y'all go, man, you so blunt with that. The reality is it was gone. I let it grow. I still had holes in it. So the best thing to do is just take it off. Y'all see, I don't want to be blunt, be real with it. The reality is, when it is what it is, you don't try to pretend it isn't that. Somebody said, well, does not the Bible says count those things and be not as though they were? I didn't tell you to ignore the reality of what it is. He says the things that are to come, you acknowledge that they're coming, but you don't pretend like it ain't here, right? What's going on isn't here right now. But y'all won't say amen. Amen. You cast down the fantasies. Cast down the imaginations. And then what's the second thing? And every high thing that does what? Exalts itself where? Against the what? Yeah, I don't think all y'all got that in y'all's Bible. Y'all need to find it so you can remember this. I'm about to give somebody some, some free Lessons on prosperity in the things of God today. Here's what you need to deal with. Y'all taking too long. Come on, come on. First thing you got to do is cast down what? The imaginations. Second thing is, everything that what? 
And itself against what? Exalts itself against you. Exalts itself against what you're trying to accomplish. The knowledge of God. What? Stop right there. As the world turns, as you're searching for tomorrow, you got to know what God said about you and your condition. Amen. You won't get that. That's why we're wrestling. Because we don't know what God said about you. David said, God, you knew me before my mama even knew she was having a baby boy. David said, the fact that I understand that leads me to understand that nothing can happen that you're not in control of. So when the devil comes and tell you, you're going to die or it ain't going to happen, guess what? You step back and say, hold on here. I cast you down, you evil spirit. Because God said, it is done, and I settles it for me. See, y'all don't get that. Y'all don't get that. You cast down every thought that exalted itself. And bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Who has to do that? The Holy Ghost is going to do that for me. And the word even say that. See, that's your problem. You waiting on somebody else to do it. You got to bring it into authority. You got to bring it in subjection. You got to say, hold on here. That's the last night you're going to torment me while I'm sleeping. God, Before I go to sleep, Holy Ghost, you on God here. Don't let him come in tonight. Oh, y'all understand what I'm saying. See, I got tired of fighting in my sleep. I said, okay, Holy Ghost, when they come, I'm going to go to speak it in tongues and you fight the battle while I sleep. Y'all don't get that. How can you speak in tongues when you're sleeping? Easy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, y'all don't, don't see. Y'all quoting scriptures and throwing them back at me, but do you exercise in them? See, truth is, if we exercise it, it would manifest what it says. Am I making sense, anybody? Yes. As the world turns. And as you're searching for tomorrow, watch this. And having in readiness, y'all, some of y'all already closed the Bibles. And having in readiness to revenge what? Who going to have to do that? This is ours. You. Having in what? And readiness. Readiness means preparation. Right, right, right. Oh, y'all don't think y'all got to prepare for nothing. <laughs> Having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when you're what? When you yourself have lined up with truth that everything that comes against your truth, you can defend it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I got a knowledge, Sister Wood, of the Lord. I got a word from him. <laughs> Shall prosper. What is my word? The word is sickness can come. Oh, but by his stripes, I mean, I'm healed. I'm healed. Ah, the word is, I may be broke, busted, and disgusted. Ah, but my father is rich. things after the outward appearance. If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Simply said, you got to know whose you are. Some of us, we just say to be saved. But ain't no, there's no benefit in you having the Holy Ghost. Because your joy stops when the music stops. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Your peace ends at the benediction. <laughs> no. I'm sorry for you. I'm sad. I wish that I could bottle this peace that I have and sell it. Because it's scary. Sometimes I don't understand what God is causing me to become. And y'all hear me say that all the time. Amen. When I look at myself, I don't see who I am. Let me explain that to you. I try to look at look for my mama. I try to look for my father. And sometimes I don't find either characteristics in me. A whole nother person is there. And I and then to be honest with you, sometimes when I get angry and I want the old car to the surface. So I can put somebody where they need to be. I look for that person. He's not there either. So when I say I sometimes can't find who I am. It's because the Holy Ghost is doing something in me. That's blowing my mind. When I try to figure out. Why am I not frustrated about certain things. I'm reminded because you're not in control. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know one of the things that makes me crazy? Mm -hmm. And the Lord has helped me with that just in the last couple of months. Is incontinence. Mm -hmm. People that you can't depend on. Lack of respect for authority. That vexes my righteous spirit. And I'll be honest with you, until a couple months ago, I used to get so upset, I'd be bawling under my skin to where I could just snatch somebody. But you know what? I got the victory over there. Because I come to realize that I go if I have to go by myself. How many of you can say that today? I don't think y'all y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. I said to myself, as I started exercising again and trying to eat more meals to lose weight, I'm going to get myself so fit and healthy again. I'm going to be able to do everything from morning to night all by myself if I have to. You know why? Because I'm not going to let the devil have any strongholds in my life. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do y'all look at me like I'm crazy? Amen. It's when you start putting your dependence and your trust mm -hmm. in things and people, mm -hmm. and the devil knows that's where your hope is, right, 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 right. guess what he do? Right, 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 right. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you? Right. But if my hope is in God, all I need to do is show up and say, God, it's you and me. <laughs> because you that is with me is greater than you that is in the world. And that's why I get myself fit. I'm not talking about just in the physical, but in the spiritual. <laughs> But the Lord heard my cry. 
The enemy's attempt to get you off base because he understood if he gets you off base that you're going to be too dizzy to find your way back to square one. Yeah, Y'all know what it's like when you've been spinning for a while. you staggering. And eventually you do what? You fall. That was the enemy's attempt to get you spinning and spiraling out of control. But, but you know what I found out? That rather than falling, if I just get my footing, spread my legs. But see, I won't get that. Your problem is when your legs are too close together. But when I get a, a wide base, that's having done all to stand, stand there for And if I feel like I'm still losing my footing, how about just take my knee? I'm not telling you to do that now, but when you take one knee, that's submission. You moving with the things. When God's telling you to get a hold of truth, you got to grasp the reality of your situation. Pretending that it's not there doesn't change it. Dreaming of another thing that may come to you. You won't have to grab some truth. And then you won't have to control your culture by bringing every thought to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. You gotta know what God says towards you and for your life. That's where your victory comes. When you can remind yourself what God says to you, what God said about you, what God's thoughts are towards you, that's where your victory is. It's not in falsehood. It's not in fantasy. It's in truth. It's in truth. If you're here, step out. If you're here, just step out. Right now, just step out. Although your soul is satisfied, all of your needs he will supply. I know he's here. Right now.